Episode 3 of The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, just aired a little bit early on AMC Plus and I just watched it. I'm going to review it for you guys, give you my first reaction to it. This episode had a lot of world building, which I really appreciated, and a lot of character moments. But before I get too in-depth into this video, I'm going to let you know there's going to be some spoilers here. Not a lot, but some. It's not going to be a play-by-play. -play. I'm not going to talk about every single thing that happened. I'm just going to talk about the main things that I liked and the main things that I disliked, if there was anything that I disliked. But also, before I get into it, you should consider subscribing. I talk about the Walking Dead universe all the time. I talk about every single episode of the Walking Dead universe as it airs, spoiler discussions. But I also talk about other TV shows, I talk about movies, I talk about survival horror video games, and just couple other things as well, so just consider subscribing. But anyway, this episode of Daryl takes place in Paris, and that's really exciting. Whenever there's an episode of The Walking Dead universe that takes place in a major city or a major tourist attraction, like the Washington DC episodes or the Atlanta episodes, I get really, really excited. I'm really curious, and I'm always excited to see what they're gonna do with really popular, well-known locations. We don't see the Eiffel Tower up close in this episode, though we do see it in the distance quite a bit, but we also see a bunch of other tourist attractions, including Jim Morrison's grave, which I wasn't expecting, and they played a French version of People Are Strange by the Doors, and I thought that was pretty cool. But also on top of that, we have a lot of scenes that take place in the catacombs of Paris, you know, with like all the skeletons and the bones that line caves. I don't know why, but I wasn't even considering that we might see that in this TV show, but once we did see it, I got really excited. I think that's really cool. Not only did this episode have a lot of world building when it came to different locations that we've never seen before, but we also get to meet different groups of people that we've never seen before as well. The vast majority of this episode takes place in an underground club that's in the catacombs, and that was kind of cool. It was really, really weird. There were like dancers and singers, and it looked very, you know, present day, modern day before the apocalypse, and it was really funny seeing Daryl's facial expressions. It honestly reminded me of a place that Fear the Walking Dead would have happened upon in the very early Dave Erickson era of the show, and that was kind of cool as well. Though the leader of this group turned out to be Isabel's ex. We met him in the flashback at the start of the apocalypse, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about this, because at the beginning of this episode, when it showed the previously on uh, Daryl Dixon. It reminded us of the plot line with her ex, and then I immediately thought, if he's still alive, if she re-meets him 12 years later, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about that, because that's very unrealistic, that's very unbelievable that that would happen, and of course, that's what ended up happening here. So I'm not sure how much I like this, because I don't like how the Walking Dead universe feels like they can't leave any loose threads. Like, for example, when they brought Morales back in season eight of The Walking Dead as a savior, I didn't really like that. I wish that they left it open. I wish that he just left with his family in season one, never to be seen again. It makes the universe feel bigger. It makes the universe feel more realistic. And the fact that we re-meet every single character, that every single character is starting to get closure, and people are starting to re-meet people years and years and years later, it's just kind of unbelievable to me. But with that being said, I'm not completely mad, because this character is interesting. His performance is good. I'm really curious what he's going to do uh, in the future of this TV show, especially since he's implying that he's actually the kid, the Messiah kid's uh, father, which is really, really strange. We get more scenes with the tattooed face villain, and he basically introduces himself to the lady who I believe is in charge of what's going on with the boats. Kind of connecting plot points a bit earlier than Dead City did, which I find, you know, satisfying as well. But with that being said, they're setting up the same dynamic of this male tough villain who's working underneath a very political style female villain. And in Dead City, I complained about this in the finale because they did it twice and they did it in the final seasons of The Walking Dead, and they did it in Fear the Walking Dead, and it's just getting annoying. Like, why does every villain have to be working underneath a more political villain? It's like, we've seen this plot line a million billion times. Though when it comes to this lady, I'm forgetting her name, and what she's doing, we see her and this group of people experimenting on a variant walker, and that's really exciting to me, because I want to see more variants in this universe. But I'm not quite sure what they were doing. I'm not sure if they're basically experimenting on variants and creating the variants, and if that's the case, I really wonder how and why they're doing that and how their variants ended up in the United States. But I also think maybe they're just experimenting on variants to see how they became variants, what's different about them compared to other walkers. That's what I think is happening, but I'm not sure. With this episode of 
of Daryl, I'm starting to notice even more that I think the pacing feels off. Not the overall pacing of the show and how it's flowing, but the pacing of the narrative, and I'll get more into that in a little bit. But don't get me wrong, I still think the show is paced very, very well for a Walking Dead universe show, but it's not paced as well as I'd personally like when comparing it to other better TV shows. But this might change once I binge watch the whole show when it finishes. And speaking of that, also consider subscribing because once Daryl finishes, I'm gonna rewatch it through a second time. And then I'm gonna rewatch through Dead City a second time. And then I'm gonna release a video on this channel comparing the two shows in multiple different categories and seeing which show I personally think is better. But anyway, I wanna get back into the pacing of the narrative of Daryl. And they're doing something that Dead City also did and I'm not saying I dislike it I'm just kind of getting tired of it and that's that when Dead City was airing and Daryl is again doing the same thing they're doing this thing with the narrative where the characters know a lot of information that the audience doesn't and as the episodes progress we learn more and more and more and then by the time that the first season is over we learn that motivations and intentions of the main characters weren't what we initially thought and it kind of makes for a disjointed first watch because some things aren't adding up narratively we don't quite understand where people's head spaces are at and why they're doing what they're doing and again it just kind of makes the first watch feel a bit cluttery in terms of dialogue and narrative pacing but I think that this is a problem that's not really gonna be a problem once I watch through it a second time and actually know where it's going it's just kind of odd to me personally that Dead City did this and it feels like Daryl is doing this at the same time I kind of wish that narratives were a bit more straightforward in at least one of them. But anyway, that's my quick and brief thoughts on the newest episode of The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon. What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments and uh, yeah. Thank you for watching, especially if you watched this far.